Are you a business owner? Do you feel that you have the important leadership skills necessary to take your business to the next level? In today's episode, that's exactly what we're going to find out. What's up, guys? Matt Wyke, Wyke Fitness. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode. Today, I want to talk about four very important leadership skills that you need to possess if you're a business owner in order to protect your longevity in the market, grow and scale your business, and become successful in what you're trying to do. Now, it doesn't matter if you're a business doing $50,000 a year or $50 million a year. You need to still possess these four very important traits. And that's what we're going to go into next. But first, I want to thank you guys. It's because of you that I continue to put out these podcast shows. I mean, I've, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'm not making any money off of these podcasts. I want to bring you guys the best value To help you guys with your health, your life, your business, you know, your family life, and everything in between. The main reason why I do this is because we live in an age where we have so much information that's out there, not necessarily all of it is good information. So, I'm taking it upon myself. I want to make sure that I put out the best content that brings you guys a ton, a ton, a ton of educational value that you can apply to your own life, your own business, your own fitness, your own nutrition, whatever the case may be. And so I appreciate you guys checking in, whether you're listening over on YouTube or on my website over at whitefitness.com or on iTunes. If you subscribe to any of those, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I know it's hitting your uh, your inbox or at least your your subscription folders in YouTube or in iTunes every single week that that I put this out. So I appreciate you guys. And if you haven't checked it out, head over to our website. There is so much information over there with the articles, the interviews, the blog posts. I mean, the thing is pretty much updated basically on a, on a daily basis. I'm, I'm trying to grind it out and just flood you guys with tons of great information. I mean, obviously not everything is going to um, you know, necessarily resonate with, with you, your situation, whatever the case may be. But I know it's helping other people as well. So I'm just going to continue to put out the content and hope that it brings you guys uh, some great educational pieces. But let's get into it. So the four important leadership skills that I feel all business owners need, regardless of the size of your business, the first one is to delegate. Now, I'm the type of person, I want to run everything. I want to do everything. You know, there are people out there who feel that, you know, nobody can do their job better than them whether it's marketing, sales, um, customer service, retention. I mean, it, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, to grow your business, you either need to upsell existing customers, you need to make customers buy more frequently, or you need to acquire new customers. So those are the main three reasons how you're going to grow your business. And in order to get those things done effectively, you need to delegate work. So maybe while you're working on the marketing, you want to hire a sales team. Maybe to start, if you don't have a lot of money, maybe they just are straight commission. If they bring in money, they make commission on the the dollar amount that they bring in. That's how they get paid. You make money for your business. Everyone's happy. You need to delegate. You can't do everything and expect to be successful. You have to look at the big picture and the long game and realize that an investment in employees is extremely important for your longevity. The second one, uh, you know, the, the second important leadership skill that I feel that you need to have is that you're only as good as the people that are under you. So let's take a look at the bigger businesses that have um, you know, the C-suite, you have your CEO, your CMO, your CFO, your, uh, COO, you know, you have you have all of these um, executives in the business, and under the executives, maybe you have directors or managers or 
a sales team or a marketing team or customer service team, you are only as good as those people that are under you. You want to be slow to hire and quick to fire. You want to find the best people to fill the job that you need completed. And this goes back to the delegation side from number one that I spoke about. You know, you might be amazing at, you know, closing deals and contracts when when you're in the boardroom, but maybe you have no idea anything about social media. You're terrible at social media. That's where you need to bring in the best of the best. Know and realize that you are not the best at this specific piece of business. And that's okay. You know, you don't have to beat yourself up over it. But knowing that, you need to bring in somebody who's smarter than you. And, and you know, that's where I, I personally think that people are scared to bring in people that are smarter than themselves. Because they don't want to feel inferior and feel like, oh, well, this person is going to look at me differently because they know more than me. And that may be the truth for just that one specific example. Marketing might be their wheelhouse. Social media might be their wheelhouse, but they could be terrible at sales. They could be a terrible leader. They could be terrible at retention or customer service, whatever the case may be. So look at the people that are under you and make sure that they are the best person for that position. If not, don't hold on to a dead fish. Just let it go. And I know it's it's not easy to fire people. Nobody wants to do that. It's 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 awkward, it's uncomfortable, you're not sure how they're going to react, but it's necessary to grow your business. You can't grow fast enough with somebody who's holding your business back because they can't complete their job. And that's okay. Just be upfront with them. Say, "Hey, look, you're a hard worker, but it's not working the way that, you know, we thought it would in this position." Maybe that person's better suited for a different position in your company and you don't have to fire them. But you need to make that decision on your own and make sure that, you know, the people that are under you are the best at what they do. So the third thing that I want to go over for important leadership skills for business owners is that if you don't want to do something, why would you expect your employees or other people in your business or organization to do those things. Now, a prime example of this is if you're a small business, you know, you're you're very lean, you don't have a cleaning crew that comes in and, you know, cleans the the offices and the bathrooms and vacuums the floor and, you know, all of that stuff, does your windows. So, you and the employees have to do that. So, let's use the uh the dirty example of the bathroom. Let's say you have to clean the bathroom or the bathroom floods because somebody clogged the toilet. If you, as a business owner, don't want to go do that, why would you expect your employees to go do it? It's it's honestly that simple. I can't I can't explain it any other way. You know, as as a leader, as a business owner, as a high level executive in a company, you need to lead by example. You aren't better than anybody else that's there because everyone has an equal part of the business when it comes to its success. You all have to work together. So you know what? As a leader of that company, you better go grab a mop and start mopping that up because you know what that's going to do when the employees go, oh, wow, John's cleaning up the bathroom himself. He's the owner. I'll be damned if I'm going to say no the next time he asks me to go clean that bathroom because he just did that and he owns the business. You know, we're employees of his. So you need to look at it from that aspect. If you aren't willing to do the dirty work, get your hands dirty, and obviously the bathroom example is uh, probably one of the most dirty and disgusting examples that, that I could touch on, then what makes you think other people are going to be, I don't even want to say excited to do it because what's, I don't think there's anything exciting about cleaning a bathroom, but chipping in and helping out is what it's all about. 
And if you lead by example, people are going to follow. So, you know, don't be that business owner where you only want to do what you want to do. And if there's something that you want to, you know, that you don't want to do, don't go tell somebody else, hey, you need to go clean the bathroom. The toilet overflowed. You know, it, it should come down to if the employees see it, they want to take action because collectively, it's a common space. It's a common area. So, you know, they're not going to wait for, you know, uh, the direction to go take care of that. They're going to look at it and go, oh, man, we got to fix this now. They might fill you in and say, you know, hey, boss, man, uh, toilet overflowed. I got it, but I just want to make you aware in case we need to call somebody to get that checked. I turned off the water. You know, I'm going to go mop it up right now. But, you know, we might want to look into this further. You know, that's cool. But be the first person to go help where help is needed and lead by example. And the last piece, the fourth thing that I want to go over to be um, a successful leader as a business owner is that you need to communicate. You can't shut down. So don't be that business owner who walks in the office in the morning and you walk past everybody, you don't say hello, you don't make eye contact, you don't wave, you don't shake hands, fist bump, high five, what's up everybody? Don't, you know, don't be, don't be the guy who just walks through, closes his office door or her office door, and you never hear from them until 5 p.m. when they open up their office door and they leave. Communicate. If, if there's no communication in your business, you're going to fail. because. You're not helping your employees by simply sitting there doing nothing. Look, the the fact of the matter is, and and I hate to, oh man, what's what's the term that I want to use here? Um, I I don't want to lump everybody under one broad category or you know one brush stroke of saying people are lazy and they'll only do what they're told. But but let's face it. If you look at, you know, your employer, where you work, your office, look around. Is everybody doing their own thing that they know their job? They don't need to be told what to do. Or does somebody have to put something in place where they're like, okay, today I need you to work on this. Or here's a project that I need you to complete. Or are they literally walking in the office every day. You don't even need to talk to them to tell them what they need to do. They're already sitting down and they started because they know the task at hand, the project, the direction that the company wants to go and and they're, you know, doing what they need to do. So, you know, as as a business owner, you need to communicate. And I'm not saying you need to go out for, uh, you know, beers and and bowling after work every day or or hit the club, have a barbecue at your house. I mean, look, you can have a business family, business relationship. You don't have to be friends with everybody. I mean, uh, you know, when I was in corporate America, there were people who, honestly, I didn't get along with at all. But I knew I had to work with these people. So, you know, yes, many times we agreed to disagree. We didn't see eye to eye. I wouldn't even say that we were friends. But we were co-workers, we had to coexist, and we had to be able to work together effectively and efficiently. And as a leader and a business owner, you need to make sure that that is your environment for your business. If you have a cancer that's in your business who can't separate the two, where they feel that everyone's against them, everyone's pointing the finger at them, everyone singles them out you know what, you need to sit them down and you need to have a little chat. Say, hey, look, we need to coexist. If you don't like, you know, Billy, Tommy, Sally, Jane, whoever, that's cool. But at work, we are coworkers. We are a team. We're going to work together. When five o'clock or six o'clock or whatever time that you need to punch out hits, you can leave. You don't need to talk to them. It's not like you need to go home to your family and you need to be texting your coworkers and calling them up or interacting with them on social media. You you don't have to do that. 
That's perfectly okay. But at work, you're going to work as a team. And if people don't understand that, that's where it's, you know, slow to hire, quick to fire. They're gone. You don't need that in your business. You don't need that type of environment where people are constantly, you know, nagging and nitpicking about things that other coworkers are doing. You know, you're not working as a cohesive team. If there's no team and somebody thinks that, you know, it, there's an I, whether it's, you know, I'm being singled out or I think I can do better than everybody else, either way, it, it's going to negatively affect, you know, your team. So you need to keep the lines of communication open. If there's a problem, you communicate about it immediately. You nip it in the bud, you move on, and you continue with your day. But at the same time, you want to be friendly to your staff. Nobody wants to hang around or, or work for a boss who, quite frankly, is a jerk. They don't, they don't care about their employees. They don't talk to them. They don't ask how their day is. They don't ask if they have any questions, if, if they need help with anything. How's the project going? Or are we meeting our deadline? Uh, you know, is there anything I can do to help? You know, can I pull somebody from somewhere else to give you some assistance? Oh, you don't know how to do that? Okay, cool. Let's have a meeting. Let's sit down. Let's discuss. Let's strategize. Let's figure out how we can do this as a team. You need to communicate. You can't shut down on your employees. So those are the four main things that you need to implement into your business as important leadership skills that you need to possess, whether you're a business owner, a CEO, an executive in a business, whatever the case may be, you need to lead. You need to have these skills. You need to implement these things every single day in your business. If not, I promise you, it will negatively affect your business, your job. And if you're not the owner, maybe you're just an employee, maybe you're uh, you know, a CMO, a CFO, whatever. If you're not doing these things and it's negatively affecting the business, guess what? Job security these days is very scarce. If, if you're not willing to put in the work and, and, and lead, man, there's somebody else knocking on the door and they want to know exactly what they have to do to take that person's job. So think about that when you go to work. You know, maybe you're an employee. Maybe you want to work your way up the, the ladder. That's cool. Go for it. But you need to be a leader and show your leadership, uh, leadership skills. So go ahead and, and if you have to, go back and listen to this again. I mean, this, this episode was, was pretty short, like 20 minutes or so. Um, listen to it again if you have to, or share it with other people. Maybe put it on your social media. Maybe you need to send this to some people in your business and say, hey guys, you know, Matt's making a lot of sense here. We're really not helping lead. We're, we're kind of like the flock that's waiting for the shepherd to come and kind of direct us in, in whatever direction we need to go. And that's cool. Hey, look, I, you know, I would rather you guys discover this now versus down the road where, you know, you're losing money over the court. So, look at this thing today. And I promise you, it will positively affect your business in the short term and the long term. So, I hope this brought you a ton of value. I hope you guys had an amazing 4th of July. Um, I took a few days off the previous week. Uh, I took the family to the beach. Had a couple, you know, great meetings while I was there. Uh, got a lot of work done. You know, spent some time with my family at night. Um, so, I hope you guys had an amazing holiday. Whether it was with friends or family. Maybe you just chilled by yourself. Uh, you know, mine was fairly low-key. You know, with, with you know, traveling and, and a little vacation the prior week. Uh, you know, I really wanted to keep it low key and, and just get some more, more stuff done around the house, play some catch up. Uh, so that's what I did. But I hope you guys had an amazing 4th of July. Uh, reach out to me on social media. I love the feedback on all of the different episodes, uh, even the posts. You know, it doesn't have to be just about this podcast. You know, let me know what you think about some of the content that I'm putting out, the articles, the blog posts. Uh, love, I love feedback. I love to hear from you guys. If it's helping you guys, if you have any ideas of things that you have questions on that you would love to see a piece of content surround, let me know. 
But until next week, I hope you have an amazing rest of your day, an amazing weekend. If it's smoking hot where you are, please stay cool, please stay hydrated, and I will catch you guys next week.